Hello everyone. Welcome to Bible study. Today we're going to learn from the Word of God and we're going to learn a lot of things. But the first most important part about learning from the Word of God is to come to the reality that we need the Word of God. We need to understand what God is speaking to us. We need to actually learn of the Word of God. Because a lot of times, as you will understand through this, through, through this teaching that we're going through, there's a lot of times when we treat the Word of God as just some form of knowledge instead of life-giving power that it's supposed to be. So why don't we pray, let's believe God to reveal His knowledge to us, to understand more of what He is. Father, we thank you for your grace, your goodness. Thank you for this, this moment, Lord, that we can open up your word to learn of it, Lord Father. May our minds, eyes be open, Lord Father. May our hearts be receptive to everything you speak. May we hear what you are speaking to us. May we learn, Lord Father, everything that you are teaching to us. We trust you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, uh, throughout this journey, we've been learning about so much about our redemptive power, the, the idea of everything that God has planned through, everything that God was making through, from the moment of inception of our, our generation, of, of, of Adam and Eve, till that time that we have gone to the cross, we've understood everything was pointing to Jesus. Everything was regarding at the name of Jesus, at the power of Jesus, of who He really is and what He is doing. Everything was pointing to the idea of the redemption of us in Jesus Christ. And the truth is, all of this, this knowledge that we get about the redemption has come through the God's gift to us, and that is His Word. Without the Word of God, we will never have the revelation of the truths of God. Without the Word of God, we won't have the understanding of the idea of our redemption in Christ, nor our redemption and our revelation of who we are as a new creation. We have, to put it this way, you cannot and underestimate how much value the Word of God has in the place of a child of God. If, if the Word of God is not available, the child of God will, will, will go without the knowledge of truths in their life. Without the Word of God, we will not have any understanding of our truths and standing, our authorities, the powers that we have in Christ Jesus. Without the Word of God, we will be going astray. So the first thing that we must understand, the first battle that we will always fight, the first thing that Satan will always fight for is the Word in us. You know why? Because God always works through His Word. Look at, look at Hebrews 11.3, if you're with me. Uh, the worlds were created by the Word of God. The whole revelation, the idea of everything that you see around yourself, all, all the plants, the trees, everything around you has been created by the words of God. That's how it is. Look at, I, I want you to take your Bibles and open up 1 Peter, 2, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. And it says here, Having been born again, of not of corruptible seed, but but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. This is word of God is not just some book. It's not just some ideology. It's not just some religious book or something. The truth is this word of God is the very seed through which the knowledge of God is going to come through you. Because the whole way of God's working is through his word. Whatever God speaks, that comes to pass. Whatever He wants to get done, He speaks it, He says it, it comes to pass. Whatever He wants to happen in your life, it's going through to be the Word of God. If everything around us has been made by the Word of God, why do we think that, the, that God's going to change His ideology or system of doing things and, and somehow He's going to forget the Word of God and now do something else? No. Everything that God wants you to learn, He's put it in the Word of God. Everything that He wants you to do, He's put it in the Word of God. Everything that He wants to show you of what you already have has been put in the Word of God. That is why the Word of God has been revealed. That, uh, and in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, it says, You know, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Why is that? Because when the Word comes to us, that is not just any word, it is life-giving, it is powerful, and it is the very seed of, of our redemption. That is why it comes to important to realize this is where a battle will always be. The first and foremost battle, always the devil knows, if he can take away the word of God from a child of God, he has, he has what we call paralyzed or make incapacitated a child of God. 
the moment the word of God is not in your life, you have been taken away from the authorities and the powers that are flowing in your life because you no longer have the source, the very power giving knowledge that comes from the word of God. That is why Satan has been every... You look out throughout of history, every time there was a spiritual downfall in mankind uh, to say, you know, people were, were not morally correct or, or to be able to have more understanding. It has all come about when the word of God has been put away. Uh, there were times, you know, uh, at the moment, there were times, we call it the dark ages, where the word of God, this Bible was not available or common to people. You know, it was put away and locked away in places. It was put away in places where no one could come across it. It's only certain few people were coming across it. Certain languages were there. Today, we have the Bible as the most printed book, what we call, throughout the whole of our all, all our generation. This is the most published book in the world. You know why? Because once this knowledge becomes common, Satan cannot fight it. So what he does is that he has been through it throughout time. So... All throughout time, Satan has been always attacking the word of God, whether through hiding the word of God, whether through, through trying to uh, create division because of the word of God, or whether to try and um, nullify the authority of the word of God. Because he, he knows this is the only thing standing between you and victory. He already knows this is the only element of knowledge that is available to a child of God to change his ways, to come to a place where he is no longer bound by the world system and to be understanding of the word system, to be able to come to a place where he belongs as a child of God, to understand. See, throughout all times, throughout all traditions, you've been taught things. From when you were little, you were taught things. But if you want to learn about God, the only way to learn about God is through his word. If the word of God is not preached to you, if the word of God is not alive in you, if the word of God is not becoming rooted in you, if the word of God is not your foremost available book, what we say, you know, all the time will be everything that Satan wants to do, he will continue to do in your life. He will continue to do, no matter how saved you are. It doesn't matter that. You know why? Because this is the source of redemption. This is the way to live life. God works through his word. He, te he says it, it comes to pass. He, he speaks it, it comes to pass. Everything, I, 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 in order to make uh, another word to say, you know, if the devil wants to make you ineffective, ineffective, that means you can be, um, like, like Jesus said, you know, uh, the, the enemy that we have is like a toothless lion. All he does is roar, but he has no power. Because the very power has been taken from you. Exactly in the same manner, if you want to look at a child of God, he can be powerless and toothless without the word of God. This is your weapon. This is the sharp two-edged sword that allows you to go through things. This is the two-edged sword that makes things happen in your life. This is the thing that, that allows you to be everything that you have called to be. So, everything that happens, you know what happens? Every time the word of God was lost, uh, redemption, the idea of redemption was locked, lost away. And most importantly, faith was unknown. Uh, throughout all our generations, we see, you know, all those peoples, uh, we, we call it the Reformation, you know, the time of Ref Reformation. The Reformation was the idea of certain people finding about the Bible, actually learning of the Bible, sitting down and saying, you know what, all these things, for all these years, we could have learned this. We call ourselves Christians, but we don't have access to this knowledge. It has been put away and locked away by the monasteries and the places. It became so dark, people did not understand. They have any light and hope. So the idea was they were being controlled by a system, calling themselves Christians. They were controlled by a system that was not guided or lived through the word of God. So when the idea of reformation comes, it comes to this that, they found out this knowledge and said, you know what, we need to spread this word. We need to spread this gospel. That is the way to change this world, is to spread this gospel. To go out and teach people to learn of this word. To be able to make them understand of this word. This, this Bible that you have 
in front of you even today you know what we should honor it you know why because without it there is no knowledge of redemption there is no knowledge of the cross there is no knowledge of who jesus even is see your heart may cry out for god everyone there's so many people right now crying out for god have no understanding have no availability of the bible but the moment the light that is the word of God comes to pass, that hole in your heart, you know, it, it just knows this is exactly what we've been looking for. This is the knowledge that I've been craving for. This is the God I've been craving for. The idea, all that comes through is when we have the word of God in us. You know, um, uh, and the moment the devil understood, you know what, the, he could not stop people from uh, having the word of God in their places, in their homes. Uh, it, it, it no longer belonged in, in, in locked away. You know what he would do? He, he, he would go against people so that he could try and undermine the words that were spoken. You know, he would try to, um, these ideas of church traditions, uh, doc doctrines and creeds, uh, the idea of, of trying to falsify these doctrines, trying to nullify the power and to put away the word of God, trying to create this division. All the devil has been trying to do throughout all of time, he understood the power comes from the word of God. If we can get away from the word of God, I can keep them in my grasp still. Even though he is defeated, he is absolutely perfectly defeated, yet he knows without the word of God, they will never have an understanding of who they really are. They will never have an understanding of how victorious they are. So that is what he's been doing. That's why he keeps on putting it, undermining it. Every time, uh, every moment he can, this is his first choice of battle. This is the one way he can secure victory for himself. He can keep on succeeding in this way. Is that if he can keep you away from the word of God. So the first most principle that a child of God needs to understand is that I cannot do away with the word of God. I cannot have a moment in my life where the word of God is not in me. The word of God is not available to me. The word of God is not my guiding light. The word of God is not my food for life. Without the word of God, there is no way that I can possess the light of Jesus. The light and hope that we wanted to give to people, you know, uh, uh, put it this way, you know, if we go away from the word of God, we're actually going away from God. If you miss about on understanding what God is saying, you're missing about understanding of what God is saying. If you, miss it, if you are not spending time in the word of God, you're not spending time with God. This word of God is the very essence of God himself. Without you, you to put it this way, you cannot separate the word of God from God. The knowledge of God comes through the word of God and that is the only way you can understand God. There is no other way. There is no other principle. You're not going to have some overnight revelation somehow or of something miraculously coming up and suddenly your, your mind is filled with so much new knowledge about God. No, it's not going to happen. You know why? Because God had said, this is what you will live by. This is where knowledge is going to come. Faith is only coming to come by the word of God. Your life is going to change only by the word of God. This is the seed that you will have to plant in your life and you cannot go away without it. The whole thing, See, I can tell you about redemption, but the only way I can tell you about redemption is because of the word of God. I can tell you who Jesus is only because I have the access to the word of God. I can only tell you the father is a loving father because the word of God says so. I can only tell you that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed only because the word of God says so. There is no other source for me to tell you and prove to you that this is what God wants. This is God's actual proof and will of what he wants and what he says so without it there is nothing to nothing going on and this is my encouragement to you you know uh, you know even in church there's a lot of times we we, we want to uh, we want to go into other things you know we want to share about other things we want to share about principles and ideas and, and that is all good but if the word of God is not the prime source of it if the word of God is not the very basis for it uh, uh, to tell you, if, if put it this way, if Jesus was not teaching it, there is no point for us teaching it. If the word of God is not teaching it, there is no point for us teaching it. Because whether we like it or not, you know, 
Whether we like it or not, I understand there is a lot of things good out there in the world. There is a lot of good knowledge to say out there in the world. But comparing it to the gospel, comparing it to the word of God, nothing needs more preaching than the word of God. Nothing needs more preaching than the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why even Paul says, you know what, we, we are coming to a stage where we, we, we must understand, I have learned a lot of things. Remember, Paul went through all these times, all his younger age, with the Pharisees, with the scribes, and he understood a lot of things. He understood a lot about the Old Testament, the ways, the traditions, and cultures, and all those things, the principles they were using. But he says this, in front of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, I count it all as garbage. To, for him to say that, he wanted to portray the ugliness. He wanted to portray how more greater of value is the word of God. How much more of greater value is the word of God. He wanted to show, I have learned a lot, but compared to my knowledge, everything else in the Bible is greater. Everything that the Bible teaches us is greater. Every knowledge about God is greater. And that's where our sacredness, our, our, our conception or, or our ideas of God should come from. I can teach you a lot of things about God. That's good. But if it's not coming from the word of God, it makes no good to you. That is why you must go out and read the word of God. I can teach you for sure, but you must go out and sit down, learn of God's word, learn to make this your part of your life, learn to make it not just uh, some word uh, out there, but to actually understand this is what God is saying. You know, I I'll tell you, I I'll tell you a, a short story. You know, uh, um, I remember a time in my life where, when we were, I had the understanding of God, but I did not have the word of God flowing in my life. I used to hear messages. I used to hear preachers. I would go out and listen to them. I would understand what they were saying in many ways. But there was no life through the word of God. The moment the word of God entered my life and it became taking a position in my life of priority, a position in my life of, of excellence, of saying that if the word of God says it, then it must be so. The moment it took a preeminence, he, the moment he takes that priority in my life, that's when my life started changing. That's when I started realizing of the truth of God. That's when the reality that God is God becomes starting real. Before that, you will just go out and put your minds to something and say, you know what, I know who God is. Oh, I understand what God is saying. It's good to say those things, but... For then, then it will be the same story as like what would be Jesus was saying. You know, he'd ask, ask his disciples, who do the people say I am? Who, who do you say I am? And someone says John the Baptist. Uh, some would say the Pharisees. Or, or someone would say one of the prophets. But the truth is, they needed to say something else. That he was the Messiah. And that knowledge only comes from God. And that has been put here for you and I. So that once you and I can start understanding what God is saying, once you and I can start understanding where God is, it will become like a hedge. I like when a pastor says, it, it will become like a hedge protecting you from everything the Satan tries to come against you. Because once you have the word of God, once you start living by the word of God, once this word of God becomes food and life to you, the devil has nothing to come against you with. He has no power to come against you with because he has already been defeated. So he has no authority over you. And he has taken, once you have the authority, the book of authority, the book that will teach you all authority, he knows he cannot stop you from having authority. He knows he cannot confuse you anymore. He cannot distract you anymore. He knows that this person will once surely will understand the authority that he is as a child of God. He will understand the power of God and I'd rather stay away from him than to come close to him. You know, the devil, the devil you will see and you will, you will understand this. He will always try and find out where he can find the moments of division. The moment he finds a place of weakness, that weakness is not just uh, your habits or anything whatsoever. The moment of weakness is areas where you are not learning what God is saying. Those areas where you're opening and leaving doors of, of, of division open, of distraction open, 
the moment you, for example, someone can say, you know what, I believe God for healing. And he can be healed all through his life. He can have no sickness come against him. He can have the best of health in his life. But if that same person has not opened himself to the revelation of God's provision in his life, he can go poor all his life. He can go poor all his life. You know why? Because he does not have the truth about what God is saying. He, the only way God can work through you and work in your life is through his word. So, you know, sometimes we, we, we think, you know, we'll, we'll pray some magical prayers. Uh, God somehow this solve this problem and God reveals, okay, you need to go and learn this. No, I don't need to learn this, God. God solve the problem. And God's, God's like, no, no, the answer is here. This is where you need to be. You need to start learning about this. Once you start learning about this, the problem will take care of itself. But we're so consumed by the only the solution, we miss about on planting the right truths, the right seed, so that the problems will never exist in the first place. And that is the place where we need to be, to be able to understand and give ourselves to the Word of God as life, life towards us. This is my life. I live by the Word of God. I shall not live by man's word. I shall not live by what anyone else has, but I shall live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I hope you've learned something here tonight. I hope you've really established the truth that without the word of God, there is no going forward. Without the word of God, without learning the word of God, without you actually going, sitting down and opening your Bible and actually learning that, yes, Jesus is Lord. Yes, Jesus has healed me. Yes, Jesus has provided for me. Yes, Jesus is for me, not against me. Yes, God loves me. That Yes, He has given me authority. Without you learning that, there is no hope for you going out and living a life of victory, of redemption, of the victories that God has set for your life. So, so make sure you take your time. You know, you need to rely on everything in your life. Anything can change. But the moment, priority has to be the Word of God. Once that becomes a reality of life, when that Word becomes priority of life, everything else will change. Everything else will come to its path because the Word of God is the very power of creative, creating things in your life. Amen? Now let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to learn of you, Lord. Father, may we give the priority and the honor to the Word of God. May we put it up as exactly the place where it needs to be, Lord Father. Let, Father, not our distractions move us from here and there, but, Father, let us be focused more, Lord Father, to learn of you, Lord. Let us be students of your word, Lord Father, not just keep it as something out there, but to actually sit down and learn of what you want to say, what you want to speak to us, Lord Father. Father, we trust you with it. We thank you, Father, for it. May our hearts be receptive of this truth, Lord Father. Let this day be a moment of change, Lord Father, not just going about another day without the word of God, but to actually live by the word of God. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you are with us here when we are here next week. We're going to learn some more. Uh, till next time, you know, I believe that God is working mighty things in your life. Believe it with God. Stand in faith with God. Stand in the word of God and see those things come to pass. With that, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord and see you next time. Bye-bye. Learn more from God's word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jcln.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLM Fiji. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLM Fiji to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.